I'm gonna Aussieify it today's video. G'day folks, how you doing? Today we are at Kowloon Park to test out the new 60 to 600 mil mirrorless lens from Sigma. Now that is a monster range, but it's not completely brand new. They did have that for DSLR back in the day, but I understand that this is a full new optical design. It's an incredibly complicated lens. And whilst it offers a crazy range, there are actually some pretty obvious comparison points that you could think about. You've got the 150 to 600, both from Tamron and Sigma have their own variants. Then you've also got Sony's 200 to 600. This guy is definitely and clearly in the sports lineup. You know, Sigma has contemporary sports and art lenses. By sport, I mean it's really rugged. It feels really well built, but it's also really heavy. When you get like the sport versus contemporary 150 to 600, there's a huge difference in the build quality. This one, I'll just run through the specs for you quickly, then we're gonna shoot some birds and shoot some portraits. I know that people use the 150 to 600 for all kinds of different purposes, so I wanna get a variety of different shots. So let's take a look around this guy. First off, this guy is available only in L mount or Sony E mount. It's got 27 elements in 19 groups, including two fluorite and a couple of extra low dispersion elements, nine rounded aperture blades. It will focus as close as 45 centimeters away and at 200 mil, it has a maximum reproduction ratio of one to 2.4. Front filter thread is 105 millimeters and this guy is heavy. We're talking two and a half kilos. Now, whilst they have saved 200 grams over the DSLR version using things like carbon fiber reinforced plastic and different materials to shave off some weight, at two and a half kilos, it's only 500 grams lighter than like a 400 mil f2.8 in modern lenses, especially once you have it zoomed out and you have the, the weight a long way in front of your camera, it does start to get a little bit heavy. My videographer was getting some test shots with it and after about five minutes, he returned saying, ugh, it's heavy. So do keep that in mind, two and a half kilos, especially on such a tiny little body, it can feel a little bit off balance. But I have to say, being used to using long lenses, I don't think it's gonna be any problem for me, except fully extended, even holding on to the tripod plate, it is quite front heavy, so then you're gonna to wanna to be out here. Anyway, Kowloon Park is famous for being in the middle of the city, but having some nice nature, and what you might be hearing in the distance, a community of flamingos. Now, one thing I've found out already, Sony Eye Detect for Birds doesn't really get flamingo eyes. It gets all the other birds nicely, but not flamingos. But still, let's get some test shots, show you what that range can do. And then we've got model Mel coming along to do some pose portraits as well. So there really is something to be said for a zoom if they're high quality. So often, you know, you come here with a 600 mil lens, for some shots, it may be perfect and giving you a constant F4 is great. You just have to spend 10 or $15,000 to get one of them. Something like this, to be able to go to 560 or 520 mil or all the way back to 80 mil or 60 mil gives you so many more options. So I can go from 60 mil back at my videographer to 200 mil. Then looking at the birds, a wide shot at 60. Let's get this guy in the middle, a single bird. 60, 200, uh, 400, and then a portrait oriented 600. Now, as I said, it's just unfortunate that the, the one bird I've chosen to shoot here, the eye detect on the Sony doesn't actually get it. So I might switch out of eye detect and just put it on single point. Um, Cause I want to be able to show you how sharp their feathers are. And even though this is a variable aperture, if I'm focused on their backside instead of their face, we're not going to get the best results. Well, unfortunately, it's not only flamingos, even the um, kingfisher here, it's not getting the eye out. Unless I put the tiniest selectable area for it, then it gets an eye out. 
Uh, there's loads of different birds here actually, and millions of bugs. I guess with them feeding the birds, that also supports the fish. The fish then bring in different kingfish. Luckily these koi are way too big for the kingfish to take away, but I guess their babies and the other little organisms are fair game. So as nice as the flamingos are, they seem to like to hang out in the shade and the eye detect doesn't work on them. So nice to have these little rat's tail birds to shoot instead. So from this vantage point, you get the bird with a skyscraper stacked up behind it. Although at this focal length, you need to be like at f22 to actually make out what it is. Got a duck over here doing calisthenics. Hey, finally a little bit of character. Hey, there we go, there we go. Ah, genuinely, I was about to give up. There's about seven of these interesting kingfishers with the top knot out now, all in boring light. Then two flew up into the tree and one just put on a little show. Now the other one is. I think I've gotten enough, pretty much the same shots of the same three birds again and again and again. Mal has just arrived, let's go shoot some portraits. Now, the rare melbird. These are an invasive species, known to fight, highly territorial. Well, I should probably tell you what the lens is we're testing today. So oh, see, right. see my earnest here? Yeah. That's how wide it goes, mm. but then you can zoom in this much. <laughs> oh, wow. I realize you don't care, but for <laughs> photographers, that's pretty cool. 10 times zoom. That's cool. Wow, that's great, darling. I'm just going to go back to my show. <laughs> and in the era of COVID social distancing, being able to shoot a portrait of you from, you know, 50 meters away is perfect. I'm ready for any silliness. I hope you're filming Ernest.
Okay, folks, it's actually been weeks or even a month since we tested out the 60 to 600. It's long since been returned, but I wanted to give you my final thoughts. As I said, you can download sample files. There'll be a link in the description below. And whilst you're over at learn.macranger.com, if you sign up, you can grab a free copy of my guide to improving your portraiture. Now, I have the notes that I made from my time shooting with it to run through with you. First off, the main shame for me is that it's currently only available in Sony E-mount and the L-mount. Of course, being a Nikon shooter, I would love to see more and more options available in Z-mount, and I'm sure Canon users would like to see that too. It's not necessarily means that I would buy the lens, but a lot of users, I think, would like to have the option. One thing I found, and it could be that it was a brand new lens that I was shooting with, but the zoom was actually really stiff. There's still a chance for zoom creep, but actually just moving the zoom as you're shooting, it actually took a fair bit of effort and sometimes having to do it in two motions to get it all the way through that epic 10 times zoom range. Next thing would be it's really heavy. Now, if you've ever compared like the 150 to 600 lenses, the Sigma Sport versus like the Tamron or the Sigma Contemporary versus the Sigma Sport, you know the Sport range, they are just incredibly heavy. This one, you know, for most of the day, well, I only shot at handhold, but if I were shooting with it all day, I would seriously consider, you know, taking along a monopod. You're going to need regular rests with a beast like that. It's not as heavy as a 600 f4 prime, still heavier than you might be expecting. The range is great if you actually need it. We'll come back to that. The image quality I think is good, probably better than their previous that was for DSLRs. On the point of do you need that range, it's easy to get attracted to it just being so much broader than anything else. You've got 150 to 600s, 200 to 600s, this goes all the way down to 60. Sounds great, an all-in-one, you only need to take a single lens with you, it'll do everything. Maybe, but maybe it won't really suit your needs. Go in and take a look if you're using Lightroom, for example, at previous shoots you've done in the same kind of genre as you're planning to use this lens. Filter to the ones that you edited that were kind of keeper shots, and then check what focal length were they actually shot with. If all your shots are up near 600 mil, a prime might be better. If they're all 200 to 600, something like a 150 to 600 or 200 to 600 may suit your needs perfectly fine and they're lighter and cheaper. Yes, there will be times though for something like birds, if you're walking through the bushes, there are certainly times where something's right up just a few meters away or that they could be you know, a long way away, so there the range helps, but it's not necessarily going to work for everyone. Um, when you're thinking about those options, both the Sigma and the Tamron 150 to 600 are great, lighter and cheaper. They would still be highly recommended for me for people who want a flexible zoom range. The Sony 200 to 600, it's a great lens. Of course, you're getting 200 to 600, so that's a three to one zoom ratio rather than the crazy 10 to one ratio that this guy gives you. But note, with the Sony, you will get better focus tracking and you're gonna get more frames per second than you'll realize in reality with the Sigma option. So that's my overall thoughts. It's a great all-in-one, it is heavy, it is expensive though, and if you're going to be shooting with it for a long period of time, unless you're completely jacked, you're gonna to want to factor in a monopod both into your budget and your packing because the weight really will start to wear you down over a long day of shooting. Check out the sample files. Let me know any questions that you have. We'll see you soon.